Oh, my temporary radio solution. Whoa. When I'm not using it, I can just hide it in there like that. Problem solved. No need for a radio. All right, so for those of y'all that follow us on IG, you've already seen the uh, incredible vehicle that Uncle, not Uncle Mitch, <laughs> Brother Mitch has purchased. And uh, the other day when we were test driving that vehicle and like, you know, checking it out before he bought it, it had an awesome factory system in it. And it had this little ICS uh, mobile solutions, I forget the name of the company, rail up here where you could put your phones and do all that kind of stuff. And it really got me to thinking like, dang, my Land Cruiser is in need of a massive upgrade. And I didn't know if I was initially going to be keeping this car, but now that I've fallen so deeply back in love with Land Cruisers, I'm not ever letting go of this car. So I'm going to update the stereo. Now, my temporary solution, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. My temporary solution was the radio that came with it that had a shortage that I fixed myself. And uh, it didn't have Bluetooth. So I just kind of like did some like, uh, finagling and I added this little Bluetooth dongle adapter to the radio because the one that came with this radio we got lost I guess years ago and I've been having this thing plugged in with the wires and all this kind of stuff ever since but it's a horrible horrible workaround so I'm going to do something better now knife yeah voila the a t -t 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 double den in dash car entertainment stereo this was the cheapest and highest reviewed uh entertainment unit that i saw on the amazon so i'm going to install it drive around with it and uh tell y'all what i think about it now i'm gonna tell y'all once again this channel is not sponsored by anyone these are completely independent reviews that we do at krt life and we want to keep it that way so uh yeah i'm about to pop this thing in and uh let y'all know what i think real quick so here we go all right so first things first we're gonna go ahead and open up the auto volva real quick and uh it comes with a lot of features already built into it android apple carplay Supposedly has a massive screen, supposedly really easy to install. Comes in a very tiny box. Let's go ahead and open this thing up, see what it looks like. And now, now, a lot of these features, let me just preface this. A lot of these features I am not going to be installing today. I'm just trying to plug this thing up and get some tunes going through my car that sound halfway decent. So it comes with all the literature. So yeah, look how narrow radios are nowadays. That's really, really cool. All right, so I'm about to peel this off, pop this in, and we're gonna see what happens. All right, and voila, just like that, I have removed this bit. And if you own a 100 series, you know this is super easy to pop out. No problems there. Impact! Pop, 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 pop. I ran a USB cable that I never used for this radio because it didn't charge. And it also wasn't compatible with my phone. All the way through the dash. That's the only thing making it hard to take this radio out. Oh, radio is out. Oh, radio is out. Well, it's cut my seats any more than you already cut. All right. So I was fiddling around trying to figure out how I wanted to install this. Uh, it's, they give you this little kit right here to install this double din adapter, which is this little bit of kit right here. And then you're going to pop it onto the side, put three screws on both sides. And now you have a radio that will fit with your uh, radio uh, harness uh, carrier dealio things. And you can just bolt it up like that, slap it in. And there you go. All right, so not quite as plug and play as I hoped. I need to unsolder these connections and then connect these three uh, cables, the constant, the uh, switch, and the uh, negative to this right here, and then it'll work. Yay. All right, so the radio is in there and this thing is pretty darn awesome. So now I'm about to go ahead and go test it for a day or two and let y'all know what I really think about this thing. All right, y'all, it's several days later, as you can tell by my haircut, and I hate making inconclusive vlogs, but I'm in a state of, uh, I'm in a stalemate with this one right now, I guess I should say, but I guess just in case, I'll go ahead and talk about everything that's going on with this radio right now. So the function of the actual radio is great. Everything works great for the most part, um, with the exception of it popping. Now, let me see if I can show y'all this real quick as I hold the phone with one hand because I left the blogging stuff in the other car. Let's see if it'll do it. So when it boots up, 
it pops. Let me see if I just like do this and don't crank it all the way up. Maybe it'll do it. Mm -mm, didn't do that at that time, which is good. But every time I turn it off, it always pops. So let me show you all that. So when I turn the car off, like so, and here comes the popping sound. Yep, there it goes. So as you just heard, uh, it always pops when turning off. Sometimes it pops when turning on. Um, radio that I had in here prior to this didn't do it at all and it was wired exactly the same way. So function outside of that is great. I hate that popping thing. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get another radio shipped to me. Uh, and then two other quick things that I wanted to mention is this fit. So the fit of this radio, as you can see, ain't really the best. It's not the cleanest install. And down here, I made a mistake. I uh, tried to cut the framing, or not the framing, but this, uh, uh, how would you describe this? Yeah, I guess framing to modify it so this could push all the way through. Didn't really come out too good, as you can see. And then I had to like go back and paint over this with some black enamel, and it just looks eh, not horrible, but terrible enough for me that I don't really like the way it looks. So I'm kind of thinking about maybe just going with another design, a radio that where the face actually sticks out a little bit further, like this, and like has a bigger screen. So I'm pondering that. And this screen does actually feel kind of small. I do have to say that when you're driving, you're trying to manipulate things on the screen, it does kind of feel tiny. So that's where I am with this right now. So hopefully once these uh, a new head unit comes or I figure out where I'm going with this vlog, I can give y'all an update. Stand by. All right, y'all, it's been a week. I got a replacement from Amazon. Gonna pop this in real quick and see if I can, uh, maybe that's a defective unit. Hopefully it's a defective unit. Hopefully this one doesn't do the same thing. All right, here we go. Hopefully second time is a charm and not third time. All right, so I just finished trying out the cheapest and highest review head unit I could find on Amazon for my 1999 Toyota Land Cruiser, and I got mixed feelings about it. Um, let's talk about the pros first. So the pros is this has Apple CarPlay. It has the Android version of Apple CarPlay. Um, it can you know you can have a camera coming from the front of your car you can have a camera coming from the back of your car backup camera mics all that kind of stuff this thing can do it my cons for this thing is that it didn't really fit into my land cruiser properly first of all as you can see in the video like the frame right here was slightly a little bit too big to actually like properly fit into the double den area on my land cruiser so i've modified my actual uh head unit cover plate to try to fit this which was a bad mistake i'm Kind of mad at myself that I did that because this unit I feel like was not worth it. Um, so it didn't really fit properly. Number two, I did not like the fact that it um, didn't have an actual volume knob, and I had to press these buttons right here to turn the volume up and down, which was a lot more annoying than I anticipated it to be. Um, then the main con, the biggest con, was that every time this thing would power down, it would pop. And my uh, Land Cruiser is, I'm not running the bypass, my, uh, my audio system is going through the factory amp. And then with my other original head unit that I had in place, never had that popping issue, never had any of those type of issues, but I still wanted a you know, better head unit, especially after being in Brother Mitch's new truck. And uh, yeah, that was my main like gripe with this thing, that popping sound, that was a deal breaker. Like I couldn't, and I tried a couple of wiring tricks to make sure it wasn't grounding or anything like that. But I think that the main issue was the shutdown sequence that this thing uh, is programmed to do. And I think that because it like has this long pause between when you turn the car off and it actually shutting down, I think like, you know, the capacitors inside of the, uh, um, the amp, they just have that power stored and then they just make this popping sound and I think it has a lot to do with the way that this thing shuts down. That's just my theoretical analysis. Don't really know if that's true or not. If you have any uh, information out there, you know, that you could clarify a little bit more, that would be great. But yeah, so I'm not really 100% impressed with this radio as far as like, you know, the fit and the function of it. But the software is great. I will say that. like the software a lot. So I'm going to be shopping for another radio and trying to figure out what I'm going to put in my Land Cruiser because... I did realize that, you know, having that radio in there from the 80s is not the move, and I definitely need to put something better in there. So I'm your brother Reza, KRT Life, KRT Life for the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, all of that. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty good radio, and it might work for your application. It just didn't really work too good for mine. See y'all in the next vlog. Peace.